Okay, this is the last lesson now on logarithms. It's on things I call disguised polynomial equations. I'll explain all now shortly. Just a quick starter, okay? So pause the video, have a go at the starter on the calculator, and you should note there's something cool about these groups of answers. I'm trying to make a point here. Okay, welcome back. So for the first few, okay, should have had 64 there, 64 there, and 64 here, okay? And for the second set of three, you'll get this rather enormous number, 2441, 40625. Okay, so 2441, a rather large number. So I'm writing this down. Think what the point of the start was. Well, see these first three are the same here. All right, and these are the same here. And there's an obvious connection here, okay? Remember from GCSE, if you take a power, if you take a base, sorry, sorry, take a base, say call it A, you raise it to some power M, and then raise that to some other power N. The result is exactly the same as doing that, as times in the powers together first, and then taking the power. See, look here, two times three is six. That's why it works. And the other thing, the nice thing to notice is, that see the middle one's also the same. So you can swap the order of the powers over. See, I've changed it, it was two then three, now it's three then two. So it doesn't actually matter which order you do those powers in. Very cool, okay? Same for questions four, five, and six, see? Three times four is 12. That's that bit there. And I've swapped the four and the three over and it still gives me the exact same result. So it's worth writing this down here, okay, because this simple law of powers is unbelievably effective. Okay, then. let's do an example then. Example one, pause the video, write it down, and come back when you're ready, okay? Okay, welcome back. Um, this one, okay, um, is tempting you to try and take logs. But you can't take logs for this equation because um, I got two different bases. I got base four and base two. Um, it's not going to help me at all, okay? What you can do, though, if I call this equation 1, you can, use, you can use a cheeky substitution here, all right? You can let y stand for 2 to the x. And you'll see why this is cool now, all right? Then this means that y squared, okay, is 2 to the x squared. Remember now, though, from the starter, we showed, didn't we? that it's perfectly fine to swap these two powers over, okay? So you get y squared. You can interchange the powers to get this. But what is two squared? It's four. So y squared is actually four to the x. And that's brilliant because I got that there for y squared and that there for y. So if I substitute these now into equation one, Cool things happen. 4 to the x is y squared. 2 to the x is y. That equals 12. So see, this actually was a polynomial. Remember, a polynomial is any is an expression that contains powers of a single variable. It's the polynomial in y. It's quadratic. So I'm going to take the 12 away to get it in the required formula with the right-hand side equal to 0. And then I will factorize. This factorizes very simply to this. And that means then that y equals 4. Okay. And also y equals minus 3. But remember, the equation was in terms of x. So to solve this, I need now to solve for x. So let's take the first case, y equals 4. Now, if y equals 4, remember, that means that. 2 to the x equals 4, because y is 2 to the x. It's obvious the answer is 2 here, okay, because 2 squared is 4. But if you were struggling with a random power, remember if you just take log base 2 of both sides to kill the base 2 over here, you're going to get x equals log to the base 2 of 4, which does indeed equal 2. So x equals 2 in the first case. And now if y equals negative 3, we're going to be in a bit of trouble here because that means you get 2 to the x equals minus 3. If you try taking 
log to the base 2 of minus 3 on your calculator, you're going to get uh, shouted at. Okay, let me write that properly, sorry. Uh, minus 3, I should say, no, minus squiggle. Minus 3. You're going to get a math error because you can't take the log of a negative number. So that means in this case, there's no real solution. I say no real solution because there is something called a complex solution, but that's beyond the scope of this course. All right. So in this case, there's no real solution. So the only real solution here, okay, is x equals two. So let's do another example. Put it here, all right, and then come back when you're ready. Okay, welcome back. So this one now, all right, um, I can't use the substitution y equals 2 to the x anymore. That doesn't appear in the equation, but 3 to the x does, okay? And I see 3 squared 9, so I'm thinking this might work, okay? So, sorry, if you let y equal 3 to the x, that means that y squared is going to be 3 to the x squared. And then we can interchange the order of the powers and get 3 squared to the x instead and 3 squared is 9. So y squared is 9 to the x, which is brilliant because that's what I wanted. So put into equation 1 now, okay? You're going to get uh, y squared, see? That's y squared. Take away, you know, 4 times 3 to the x is 4 times y, or just 4y, okay? plus 32 equals zero. Luckily for us now, this is already in a quadratic form, so I'll factorize it very easily. I believe to, sorry, y plus eight, y minus four. Oh no, sorry, I do want minus eight plus four, then I might want, I'm thinking ahead of the answer there. Sorry guys, yeah. I do want minus eight there and plus four here to make the negative four. That means that y equals eight, and y equals minus four. But now I'm about to solve for x. If y equals eight, that means that three to the x equals eight. And now we're gonna to have to take log base three here, okay? Because the answer won't be a whole number. So x is log to the base three of eight. So if I do that on my calculator, I got log to the base three of eight. I get the three dp. Um, I got 1.89. Let me just check. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do three. I'll do three dp for this one. Okay, I may have done two dp for the main task, but it doesn't matter too much. Okay, let me go. That's the solution there. And we know by now, if you, if you do y equals negative four, all right, you're going to get three to the x equals minus four. And if you try taking log to the base three of the negative number, you're going to get shouted at. So there's no real solution. So we get only one answer for this one. Okay, only one real answer for this one. Okay, those are the examples done. So here's the main task. Yeah, and for these ones, I have said for the main task, look, go to DP for a change for these ones. All right. Um, question five is difficult. Um, to solve question five, you may need to use trial and error. Okay, so have a go and then come back when you're ready. Okay, welcome back, here's the answers. All right, so where I've done no solve like this, this is shorthand for solution, okay? No real solution. Um, and these are all the two DP where appropriate. I've separated the answers from commas, all right, where applicable. Okay, here's the checking question. This is quite complicated, so pause the video, write it down, and then come back when you're ready, okay? Okay, welcome back. So you know, we've never seen simultaneous equations like, like these before, all right, because you know, they, 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 they got like, um, they got bases and powers in them on all sorts. Okay. And so far we can only really solve some of these equations where something like say four X plus seven Y equals 19 with no bases in them. All right. And um, again, we can't take loss here because of the different bases. So we can try and use the trick from the main task and the examples of making both the equations. So all the bases in the equations are the same. So you see what we can do basically. All right. And this one's quite new to me as well. So we'll, we'll see what can happen. Okay. I'm going to call them equation one and equation two as always. And I spot in this first equation here, I can see that I got base three, base nine, base 27. 
9 and 27 are both powers of 3. So if I just leave the first one alone, it's base 3 already. Remember, 9 to the y, 9 is 3 squared. So remember, 3 squared to the y, remember, from the starter, I can just times the powers together. This would be the same as 3 to the 2y. And on the right-hand side, 27 is just 3 cubed. It's quite nice there, isn't it? All right. And then this one here, equation 2, again, base 2, 8 is the power of 2, and so is 64. So if I leave that alone, and now number 8 is 2 cubed. So if I times the powers together now, 3 times minus y is actually minus 3y. So this would be 2 to the minus 3y. Now 64 is 2 to the power of 6. Because it's 1 over, it's going to be 2 to the power of minus 6. Now a cool trick I can use here now with these two equations here is that, remember, if I take the same base, say I could do this, remember, you add the powers together. All right, so on this left-hand side here, I could write this, couldn't I? It's 3 to 3x plus 2y, okay? And that equals 3 cubed. And the thing is now, look, it's obvious, okay? If you took, now you've got base 3 both sides. If you take log base 3 of both sides, you will kill the base 3, okay? And get a lovely equation. You're going to get 3x add 2y equals 3. Just kill all the base threes. And this one similarly, see, if you add these two powers together, then you're going to get, remember, I know it's a minus, but remember, if you add the negative, you still take it away. You get 2 to the minus 6. In this case, you just take log to base 2, and you would get minus 3x minus 3y equals minus 6. Okay, I'm going to write these two equations down here again separately. Now, let me get a bit of a separator going so I can see what's going on. Me, right, because now these two, the two equations I've just made look much more like what I call standard simultaneous equations. Okay, so I'll call these um, equation three and equation four. And really now, normally I'd multiply the equations by something, but I'm lucky here because I spot that these are pretty much the same. Same coefficient. Remember, same sign subtract. These have different signs. So I'm going to add the equations up to get rid of the x's, okay? If you do equation 3, add equation 4, then the x's will cancel out. And 2 add negative 3 is basically negative 1. So I get negative y. And 3 add negative 6 is negative 3. Okay? So now... If you just uh, divide by negative 1 or whatever you want to do, you're okay. You're going to get y equals 3. Okay, so y equals 3. In this case, because if I, if I have to show you again, look, this gives you 0. And then if you, if you have 2 plus minus 3 is minus 1. And 3 plus minus 6 is minus 3. So y equals 3. And then perhaps put this back into one of the equations. I'll put it back into equation 3 because I'm not already a fan of negative numbers. So you get 3x. And obviously, 2y is 2 times 3, which is 6. Okay, equals 3. Take off the 6. And you get minus 3. Divide by 3. And you get x equals negative 1. So in this case, y equals 3 and x equals negative 1. That's that one solved. And that's the last number. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. See you soon.